And good morning. It's Monday, April 11th, 2016. I'm Candace Red. Let's get straight to the weather with meteorologist Riley Hill. What can we expect today? Going to be a rough day weather-wise across the Delta. We are expecting severe weather once again today. That includes damaging winds, quarter to golf ball size hail, and a few tornadoes are possible as well. Here's a look at our Mid-South radar right now. So the bulk of the uh, heaviest rain and storm activity is still in northwestern Arkansas, but we're starting to see some scattered showers work their way into the area. So that will be working its way in through the morning. Now the severe weather is looking like it's going to hold out until this afternoon and actually we have flash flooding concerns as well with this system. We're actually supposed to pick up about one to three inches across the area so it's going to be a fairly wet Monday for us. Mid 60s across the area right now so staying on the warm side that south wind is continuing to bring in that moisture and warm air for us and that would just be fuel for the fire later this afternoon. Now taking a look at our day planner so we are expecting these showers to work their way in this morning and then stick around really for the, the entire day, just gonna be on and off. Warm day though, south wind will keep us into the 70s by the end of today. And I just get ready for those showers and storms. I'll have more on the threats coming up in just a little bit. A man connected to a shooting is waiting for his day in court. Well, Dante Marks is charged with two counts of aggravated assault. Police say he allegedly shot two people last month in Cleveland on Cypress Street. Both victims are still recovering. Marks is in the Bolivar County Regional Correctional Facility. A concerned family needs your help in finding a loved one. Well, Lee Air Bryant was last seen in Greenville. The family says he was staying in a motel. He's described as a 69-year-old 5'8 black male with a slim body. That's a picture of him right there. If you have any information, call the family at the number shown on your screen. And the Greenville Fire Department is still investigating a suspicious house fire. Well, it happened Friday morning in the 2400 block of Turin Street. Well, when firefighters arrived, they saw heavy flames coming from the back of the house. It took crews about 10 minutes to put out the fire. No injuries were reported. And in state news, a man is in jail after police found homemade bomb devices and guns in his car parked in front of a church. 41-year-old Jason Moncrief is charged with trespassing at the Brown Missionary Baptist Church in South Haven, Mississippi. Now, authorities say the materials are being tested, but there's no indication the suspect was targeting the church. Police say officials at the church had complained about a trespasser at the rear of their property in recent days. This has been something that they have been monitoring for a while. Last evening, it was the actual the police department that actually spotted uh, the vehicle because they had been monitoring our grounds. Moncrief is currently sitting in the DeSoto County Jail, and a man who escaped from the Capaya County Jail nearly a decade ago is back behind bars while police recaptured Sidney Banner after investigators found out he was living in Knoxville, Tennessee, where Banner escaped from jail back in 2007, and he was arrested for trying to run over a highway patrol officer who stopped him for driving recklessly. Well, Banner faces charges that include felony evasion and aggravated assault on a police officer. He waived his indictment and will return to court next month. Well, it's still a mystery why two young killer whales from deep Gulf waters stranded themselves last fall in Waveland, Mississippi. They were spotted by fishermen in marshy, shallow water, and they were in critical condition. Reporter Meg Ferris is in Gulfport to see if any progress has been made. Marine biologists say what happened last fall was very rare. Two juvenile pygmy killer whales found stranded in Waveland. They live in large family pods out in very deep waters, so little is known about them. And why they were here is a mystery. Near death, they were unable to swim, float, or eat. But scientists at the Institute for Marine Mammal Studies in Gulfport came to the rescue. 24 hours a day, holding them up in tanks, giving them antibiotics, pain, and anti-inflammatory medicines and IV fluids. Now today, something never done before, the two males are still alive. These are very rare animals. Very little is known about them. And these two are the only ones alive in the world in captivity. We just kept working hard. We didn't want to give up on them. They've become more playful. So we're seeing that as opposed to just floating at the surface. So what will happen going forward? Can these young boys make it in the wild? 
We have to make sure their health is up to par, so that's why they'll consult with the vet. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is involved, and tests show their hearing and echolocation is working. That allows them to navigate and hunt. But will they dive down for fish? Those tests need to be done. And since their habitat is unknown, can they find a pod out in deep waters that will take them in? These guys are used to being much further out, so it's not like we could do a beach release all. But biologists are happy to have all these challenges. It, it's exceptional. You know, we never expected uh, this much success, but it's incredible. From Gulfport, Meg Farris, Eyewitness News. Keeping our eye on the flood, waters with 16 counties in Mississippi are now declared eligible for disaster assistance after severe thunderstorms hit the state last month. Now, according to a press release from the U.S. Small Business Administration, Bolivar, Cahoma, Sunflower, and Washington counties are eligible for physical and economic injury disaster loans. Small businesses and some private nonprofit organizations in LaFleur County are also eligible to apply only for SBA economic injury disaster loans. Well, for more information or to simply apply, visit sba.gov slash disaster. Now, in talking politics, members of the Democrat Party spent the day electing delegates. Well, Democrat Party leaders met at Mississippi Valley State University to elect 14 new delegates. Seven men and seven women were told they'll help the party tackle key issues like public education and health care over the next four years. These are the people who make decisions for the state or the second grade congressional district or for the state executive committee in terms of creating policies and making a decision in terms of where the state Democratic Party goes. Well, they also talked about the direction they want to lead the party. And the Mississippi Highway Patrol wants to stop the knock. Well, the knock refers to when law enforcement officers knock on parents' doors to tell them their child has been involved in a deadly crash. Well, Corporal Tony Dunn is the public affairs officer for the Mississippi Highway Patrol Troop D in Greenwood. And he says the purpose of Stop the Knock is to help high school students make wise decisions while driving, especially during prom and graduation season. Well, it's time to bring it. Cheerleaders are bringing nothing but smiles to a cheerleading competition. Well, Greenville Park Commission hosted its annual cheerleaders competition Sunday at the Washington County Convention Center. Well, cheerleaders from across the Delta participated in hopes of taking home that great trophy. Well, here's what some people are saying about the high-spirited event. She was on top of the pyramid, and all the time she was telling me, Mommy, I'm doing a stunt, but I never thought she'd be on top, and she did so good. Seeing the little girls' costumes, the different outfits that they have on, um, versus the gymnastics, which I think would come at a later date, um, it was just beautiful. This Grizzlies Kings of the Court duck team, check that out. They provided the entertainment. How cool is that? Well, today in history on April 11th, back in 1881, the prestigious Spelman College opens in Atlanta, Georgia, where classes were first held in the basement of a church. Well, ultimately, Spelman would become the premier educational institution for African American women and the nation. Well, the school is ranked among the top liberal arts schools in the country by the U.S. News and World. World report. Let's take a look now at your morning Delta chat question. What's your favorite day of the week and why? I'm assuming a lot of people are not going to say Monday. Look at the bright side. At least Mondays only happen once a week, right? We'll leave a message on our Facebook page. Your comment will be read live on air. Thanks as always for participating. I'm going to go with good old Friday. Friday, I think, is going to be the number one day. Not Saturday? No. Maybe Sunday for people who like to go to church out there? Get the praise on. Uh, it's a bittersweet <laughs> day because you know Monday's right around the corner. Oh, that is true. Yep. That is true. You want to hold on to that Sunday as long as you can. Riley, what are you going with? Friday? Friday is pretty tough to beat. Yeah? Yeah. I like Friday too. Well, we want to hear your thoughts. Is anyone going to say Monday? Monday? I'm, do I'm feeling pretty good for a Monday. Yeah, it's a good Monday. Yeah. Is it good for the weather? That's the question. Not really. It's going to be a fairly rainy day across the Delta, and we actually are ex uh, expecting severe weather as well. Here's a look at the showers and actually thunderstorms already working their way into the western parts of the Delta. Now moving into Ashley and Drew County, and this is going to continue pushing off towards the east. So Greenville, about an hour away, and then we'll start seeing the rain. That'll be the first wave 
and then the severe stuff should hold out until later this afternoon. Now we do have concerns over flash flooding once again. Uh, we are expecting about one to three inches of rain to move in throughout tonight. So we are going to stay in a fairly active weather pattern through the first part of our week. But it does look like it'll clear out for the weekend, which will be good. Temperatures will get fairly warm and uh, we should clear out. A few viewer photos to go through. This one was sent in by Lamar Ashmore. This was a little bit of a foggy morning up there in Money. And then this one was out in Hardy, Mississippi. This one was sent in by Audrey Hill. Great shot there on the lake. And another beautiful sunset out of Arcola. This one sent in out of, uh, from Mike Brown. Uh, gorgeous sunset there. And last but not least, Miss Cindy Potter out of Hollandale. Another good Delta sunset and a little bit of cloud cover working its way in. So that's what we saw yesterday. It did get a little cloudy towards the end of the day, but a windy Sunday yesterday and uh, more windy conditions today. But viewer photos, if you like to send them in, just go to Facebook or Twitter. Just make sure we know who you are and where you are. All right, thanks, Riley. So as you know, there are at least two confirmed cases of the Zika virus, and there's actually some new concerns about the virus. Find out more after the break.